you got your Bibles tonight, Philippians chapter 4. And uh, man, it's so good to see you on a Wednesday night. Hump day, right? Thank you, Lord. Made it through. Philippians chapter 4, and uh, we're going to go into verse 10. Paul writing here under the function of the Holy Spirit, but uh, I believe it's something that, uh, Andy, I, I think as we get into this, you'll kind of see he's uh, already been speaking to us, and uh, he's just going to reinforce some things I believe we already got through uh, praise and worship tonight. But he said, I rejoice greatly. He said, at the last, he said, your care has flourished again. Uh, the people had told him they were going to, you know, take care of him in his ministry and, and uh, as he was out doing the work of the Lord. And, and they'd kind of dropped off a little bit, but they stepped back up. He said, you know, I, I realize you were lacking opportunity. But he, now he, he gives them some direction. He said, I'm not talking because I was running out or running, running low or doing without. He said, but I've learned to, uh, to be content wherever I'm at. He said, I know how to be a base and how to abound. But I love uh, 13. It's where we want to get to. He said, but I can do all things. Come on, say all things. He said, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. And tonight, uh, as, we were, uh, as I was kind of preparing for uh, just the direction I felt like the Lord wanted us to go in, uh, it's kind of a follow-up, actually, to last week where we talked about, you know, the merry heart doeth good like a medicine. And uh, how many of y'all recognize in the world we're living in and things going on, you know, we need, to, we need some joy. Uh, you know, I had talked to him about, you know, I said, man, I think we ought to just, I, I, not that I don't appreciate Thanksgiving, but, I, man, I'm ready to see. I, lights make me happy. You know, the Christmas decorations and stuff. I, does anybody else know what I'm talking about? It's like, man, that just makes you feel good. I, I, you know, uh, I was... I, I watch some, you know, I watch cartoons sometimes, you know, little animated movies, and uh, it was a movie on it, and it had the Pharrell song, you know, Happy. And I'd play it, but they'd kick us off Facebook. But, man, that, that song just kind of sets an atmosphere, you know? I mean, if you're in a bad mood and you just play that song, it can flip it around. And, you know, worship is very much like that. It can, you know, you need to learn. I mean, it's not always a prayer that, that you need in the time, but it's all spirit-led. Now, prayer's not a bad thing. I think we all understand that. But it may not be the right thing for the, for the moment you're in. And uh, so, you, you know, the weapons of our warfare, and they're not carnal, uh, but they got to be through God. Uh, so if they're through him, then he's got to be the one directing us to the arsenal we need at the time. You know, Ed Trout said, you know, you don't take a fly swatter against a terrorist, but, you know, it's, it's got to be the right we weapon for the battle you're in. And so just kind of following up, though, yeah, because, it, 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 I, you know, I shared Sunday morning, you know, that evidently between, you know, sometime Friday or Saturday, my refrigerator decided to quit running. So uh, I wake up Sunday morning, I'm going to run in to grab something to drink and open up the door. And, and you know that, uh, that feeling you get when you open it up and it's not cold, right? And, and then you go to the freezer side and the stuff that's supposed to be froze ain't froze. And it's like, oh, this is not the Sunday I had planned on. You know, I mean, like, I'm just going to run in here, grab a drink, get my stuff together. We're going to church, you know. And it's like, yeah, we're going to church. And, but just, you know, I can't control the situation. But I can control my response. You know, and I, I think we're probably all growing in that in some way, right? You know, hopefully we're better, you know, this year than we was last year. And next year going to be even better. You know, and I was just so grateful that I had, a, you know, a cooler and I had, you know, that, uh, another refrigerator and some ice and I could, you know, kind of pack it down and get going because I was looking at my roast and I said, oh man, them roasts are like expensive now, you know. I said, I guess we're just going to eat good this week, right? But <laughs> it's, uh, but I, I guess getting to this where Paul said, you know what, I, I, I've got to get to the place where my situations don't determine what I'm going to do. You know, and, and part of that is learning not to be emotionally driven people, you know, but to, hey, I know that's just, man, that, I, that, that hurts sometimes when you say it, but it's, we really do got to get to the place where we're spirit led, not emotionally driven. Because if the devil sees, sees that weakness in us, he can exploit it. You know, if you, if you, if you know anything about sports in any, I mean, it's kind of a commonality you know, if, you, if you're watching films on the other team, you know, if it's a ball team, you learn where their weaknesses are. You learn where their strengths are. So you, you go run to their weak side, right? You're not going to try to run head on and then in, into their 340-pound line. You know, the devils he's watching films on us to see so he can have a place to exploit. But you get to the place like, you know what? I can obey so I can abound. Oh, it messes with his head, y'all. Because he said, I thought I had you figured out. And now you done learned how to shut that flesh door. Oh, my goodness. You done took a page out of his playbook. 
Or, I, you know, and I want to get to the place where I got a chapter out of his playbook, right? You, you know, I, I want to get to the, like, he, he, what he did last year and what may have been effective last year, it ain't even got a place. You know, Jesus said the enemy comes, but he ain't got nothing in me. And I, I, I don't know about you, we're not, I'm not there yet. Y'all, y'all, look pretty, y'all look pretty right on tonight, but I'm just going to assume that maybe somebody else is out there. Maybe this is for the online folks, that y'all are like me. And uh, so we're going we're gonna to learn to abase and abound. Uh, but it's about attitude. In life, it, it really is. It's all about attitude. You know, on a plane, you really understand we, we're uh, going to be getting on one Friday. And I hope our pilot has a, an understanding of attitude because attitude determines altitude. You know, nose up, you go up, nose down, you, you know, unless you're landing, that's not a good thing. You know, we're, we're going to be hopping the pond. I, I want that attitude to be right on that plane. Amen. You know, and I, I, want him to, I want him to be open to correction or we're not going to get to destination either. That's a side note. Uh, correction is just merely direction. If you see it any other way than that, we might be seeing it wrong. You know, you course correct it or you wouldn't be here tonight. Because I promise you, the car just ain't driving itself straight, and, and sometimes you might wander to the left or to the right. So a little correction, a little get direction, but it's, it's an attitude. So uh, it, it's a cool little illustration I heard. It was a there was a little kid, and he was in the yard, and uh, didn't have any uh, you know companionship at the time, any any friends, I, I guess. And so he's out, out there, kind of flying solo, and he had his bat and his ball, and uh, so you know how you just toss it up and gonna gonna hit it. Well, he's, I'm the greatest hitter in the entire world. And he's, you know, man, he, he, he swung and he just, I mean, he just, you couldn't miss it any worse than how he missed it, you know, but he wasn't going to be, you know, put down by that. So he grabbed the ball, picked, I'm the greatest hitter in the world. Oh, man, I mean, he almost fanned the bushes over swinging so hard, you know, nothing but air, you know, and the third time he grabs that ball and he throws up, greatest hitter in the world. And shoo, I mean, he almost caught, screws himself in the ground. He's swinging so hard. And he misses completely. And what does he do? I am the absolute greatest pitcher this planet has ever seen. <laughs> right? Because it's attitude. It's attitude. It's attitude. It, you know, and being able to change with what the devil's throwing at us. You know, they took a kid and he was, uh, you know, he just were known for having just a, an upbeat. It's kind of like my wife. Just you, you never see him down. You know, you never see him in a bad situation. So they take this kid and they put him. They said, we're going to do this scientific experiment because we, we know that his environment will, will dictate his mood. His environment, if we, can, if we can give him a bad enough of environment, it, it'll, it, it'll, it'll tone him down. So they take this little kid and they put him in a, in a stall of, of horse poop. I mean, and it's kind of up to his knees. I mean, and they come back in about an hour, and he is in there giggling. He is having the time of his life, throwing it around. I mean, it's just like, and they say, what, what is up with this? He said, he said with all this, he said, there's got to be a pony in here somewhere. <laughs> right? It's attitude. Come on, look at somebody and say, it's all about attitude. It is all about attitude. And we know, you know, as we're tying in with last week, what's it say? A merry heart doth good like a medicine. So take two scriptures and call Pastor Philip in the morning if it's not working. <laughs> right? Come on. Proverbs says the strong spirit of a man will sustain them through whatever you're going through because it's being reinforced by the word of God. Amen. You know, he's understanding we're not doing this in our own strength. We're not doing this of our own accord. You know, greater is he that is in me than whatever may be coming at me. And when we really begin to, to, to you know, to lock into that, James chapter 1 you know, it's kind of just reaching back last week and pulling it forward. Go to Hebrews, take a right, you'll be in the book of James, which I am not yet, so hold on, I'm coming. Is that a song, a song right? Hold on, I'm coming. That's, oh, I shouldn't have probably done that. That might be stuck in our head now. I apologize for that. Let's go back to Pharrell. For, 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 for Happy. Uh, uh, James 1, verse 1. And... Uh, he, he kind of lays out where he's at, a servant of the Lord to the 12 scri scribes, <laughs> maybe scribes too, to the 12 tribes and those that are scattered abroad. Count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations or going through trials. We understand, you know, uh, the more uh, accurate of this, he's not, you know, because the Bible says, you know, God doesn't bring sin into our life. As a we are tested, but he doesn't tempt us. So he's talking more to the testing side of this. He said, understanding that the trying of your faith 
does produce, it works patience, but let patience have its complete work that you may be entire and wanting nothing. goes on about lacking wisdom. But he's talking about counting it all joy. Counting it joy. You know, and, uh, you know, if you, uh, how many of y'all remember the old song, Count Your Many Blessings? And there is such a powerful truth to that. If you start looking at all the good that God has done, you'll bring yourself right out of whatever the devil is wanting you to focus on. I guarantee you. You know, we're about to have a, a very real uh, experience of that when you, when you leave these borders. You know, I know we grumble sometimes and, and complain about what's going on and government this and this, that, and, you know, prices and fuel and traffic. But you step out of these borders, you realize how good we got it, y'all. Uh, we're blessed in this nation beyond any other nation on the planet. I've been in a bunch of them, you know, and this is the one that people still die trying to get into, not out of. Uh, so don't get caught up in whatever may be going on, because I promise you, no matter who's in the White House, it's temporary. No matter what you're going through, it's temporary. It's going to change. The only thing in this world that's not going to change is our Lord, and he ain't really in this world. He's, uh, he's beyond this world, but in, in it, y'all, come, y'all see what I'm going with, right? You know, so it's uh, count it joy when you go through. Start counting your blessings. Look at uh, Acts 16. I mean, this is such a, a wow. This is such a, a spiritually spanking illustration here. That, uh, but we need to see this so we, so we don't get wrapped up in maybe what we're going through and uh, to the point where we miss the bigger picture. Acts chapter 16, and we'll uh, come on uh, to uh, verse 16. It said, it came to pass as we were... Uh, going to prayer. And it's not like they were going to a uh, discotheque or, you know, uh, Paul and Silas, they're not going, you know, clubbing. I mean, they're on the, about the Lord's work. <laughs> Come on, they're about the Lord's work. They're f- pursuing the assignment the Lord has on, you know, for them to do. said, a damsel which had a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain, you know, by soothsaying, card reading, all this other mess. They were following, following us around, following Paul. And they said, these men are servants of the Most High. Show us the way of salvation. This she did many days. You know, and I'm wondering, like, Paul, why'd you put up with that for many days? And, you know, there's, there's more than we can unpack in one night. But it could be that the Spirit didn't give him liberty to do anything about it. You ever read through where Jesus would go through and only one person out of a town got healed? Or, or different situations he did or did not deal with. But everything he did was by unction of the Father. So we don't know everything that's going on, and to assume we do is a wrong assumption. You know, and it's just, I mean, you, you can get to a place where even you, if you assume something is good, that it might be right, but everything good may not be God for you at that time. You know, he may not have understood that spirit until he was with it for a bit. You know, at first it it might have even appealed. You know, you got a little little, uh, broadcasting center coming behind you. You know, you ain't got to say nothing. You got your cheerleader. These men are servants of the Most High. And then all of a sudden, you know, after another day or two, and it starts to chap your spirit. It starts to like, no, something ain't just right with this. We don't know what's going on, but we we know it got to a point where he realized this ain't the Holy Ghost. This is not the Lord. You know, even though it may have religiously sounded right or may have appealed to them, that's why I'm so thankful for the Holy Spirit. Because he'll show you what is and is not him. You know, so he, he whooped around because it, it, it began to grieve him in his spirit. And we know he rebuked the spirit. The spirit came out. Well, this did not make the folks in town happy, you know, who'd been making money off of her demonic gift. So they, you know, we know the, the story in this as we kind of dive on into it. It said they got Paul and Silas, threw them in prison after they had beaten them. You know, and I, yeah, you know, so I, I, I had to check myself getting caught up with a refrigerator that just didn't want to run. You know, and here they are beating, beaten. They're in, they're in, in prison, uh, you know, basically half naked. I'm sure they were bleeding. Yeah, you know, we're not talking about just some, you know, little slap on the wrist and don't do this. These boys didn't play. Sometimes we, you know, we may read through something and not really see what was going on or might not get the full in picture of, of what they were enduring. Because, and they had done nothing wrong, y'all. They, they, you know, and so they're in this at midnight, verse 25. Paul and Silas 
began to pray and began to sing. Whew. Wow. I don't know about y'all, but my mind probably, probably would not run to praise right off. But see, that's having to understand that no matter where I'm at, no matter what's going on, I will not let my situation determine my attitude. But my attitude will determine my situation. And the Lord said, if you can get to the place, you know, it's because it's about attitude. God inhabits the praise. So maybe what's keeping him out is my lack of understanding of how to tap into something that is beyond what I'm currently experiencing. But if I begin to turn my situation into a sanctuary, God can intervene on my behalf. Well, I mean, you don't, you don't know what I've been through and what I'm going on. No, I don't, but God does. And his word to us is, count it all joy. Count it all joy. Because I promise you, at the end of the day, no matter what you're going through, this is as close to hell. If your name's in the book of life, this is as close to hell as you're going to be. Right? So we can count it joy. Because whatever it is, is temporary. It's temporary compared to what he's got waiting on us, which he said is going to be just, uh, just beyond our comprehension to even wrap our minds around the, the amazing goodness of what's waiting on us up there. You know, so he said, count it joy. It's about attitude. Psalms 34. In the book of Psalms, chapter 34, verse 1. Love these declarations, and we're going to see several of these. But we're going to, these are these are attitude changers, and these are atmosphere changers. But Psalms thirty-four, verse one: I will bless the Lord at all times. Did David have some bad experiences in his life? Yeah, but did he learn some things going through them? Yes, he did. And can we learn from what he is now relating to us? Absolutely. Because there's a power that God wants to release in our lives when we begin to tap into this and we can understand that I can begin to flip this situation around. I'm going to bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul will make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear and be glad. Magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I don't know. How many of y'all used to play with a magnifying glass when you were little? I mean, I, uh, I, we're going to get. How many set stuff on fire? <laughs> okay. Right, yeah. I'll only ask you how many of you tortured things that didn't pour a little help us and, you know, incinerated and anyway, Lord help us. But see, the, the magnifying glass, what, what I was thinking, because I'm thinking about this and, and I had said it wrong because I said, you know, it, 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 it made him bigger, but actually magnifying him doesn't make him bigger. A magnifying glass just allows me to see more accurately who he is. You know, the magnifying glass doesn't change the object that I'm looking at. It just allows me to see more clearly what I could not see until it was. That's why David said magnify. Because if you see him as he is, he's bigger than what you might be looking at right now. He, he, he is, he, he's more better, more powerful. He is exceeding abundant above and beyond, magnify. Put, put the glass up so you can see him better. Because I promise you, it'll start praising you. Woo, heaven and earth, at, move at his word. and it, Oh, he's awesome. He's awesome. He's awesome. So don't get distracted by whatever you may be temporarily looking at, what the devil's trying to show you. Because it's amazing. You know, I saw a, a picture online, and it had this lion, and it had this cub in its mouth. And, you know, when I first saw this, I said, oh, my goodness, this thing about to snap the head off that baby. <laughs> you know, and then the camera flipped the angles, and it was a mama carrying its young by the neck. But it's all about how you saw it and how it was presented. And the devil's gotten real good yeah. at misrepresenting things. I mean, even, even to the point where he uh, uh, tries to bring a misrepresentation of the Father to us, right? I mean, and he'll use maybe a natural father and a figure of authority, what, trying to misrepresent the Father. So David magnified. David was left out when they called the sons in. 
You think he had to learn how to magnify, how to see God beyond maybe what? Because if you don't see him and see who he is and see him as Abba, you're going to miss your inheritance. Magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord. He heard me. Come on, deliver me from all my fears. They, he dropped down verse 7. The angel of the Lord encamps around those that fear him, and they will deliver. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Put, put some extra O's in there. He's good. Say it with attitude. Come on, he is good. Oh, he's shown up straight up. He is awesome. Awesome. Blessed is the man that trusts him. Fear the Lord, ye his saints. There is no want to those that fear him. The young lions, they go without. Why? Because they're trying to do it on their own. Young speaks to arrogance. It speaks to pride. It speaks to those who are trying to do it in their own strength, who hadn't learned that lesson yet, that I don't care how awesome you are, you ain't going to never be what you... But those that wait, Isaiah tells us, shall be renewed. Ooh. Come on, the young lions suffer hunger. They go without. But those that seek the Lord shall not want or lack any good thing. Man, that is so good, y'all. It's about attitude. And these things begin to change us and change the way we see things, begin to, begin to more correctly focus in. Psalm 23. Hang left and go back. Man, there's so much uh, on, on the declaration side uh, of this. Uh, Psalms 23, we know this. But David penned it by the unction of the Holy Spirit so that we could, you know, let this be projected from our spirit. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. There's an attitude coming from that. There's an attitude that needs to be stirred in us that if we're going through and going without, we need to wonder why. We need to wonder why. Because it said, he causes me to lie down in green pastures. If you laying on crunchy grass, right, then you might want to see who's doing the leading. We might want to make sure we're following the right shepherd. Now, I'm not talking about we won't go through some stuff. But I'm talking about as a general rule, right? As a general rule, green pastures and still waters. He restores my soul. He don't bleed us dry. He don't drain us out. He refreshes and restores. So you might need to check what we're tapped into. Or maybe, or, or, or maybe who we're allowing to put a drain on us. You know, because the, en the enemy... He, he may flip ministry to somebody that's draining you without even you realizing it. You know, what started off good, he can try to pervert to, uh, to, a, to a wrong association. It, it, it's happened more than once. You know, and, it, and, and sometimes it appeals to us because, man, they, you know, it's like they start. You don't realize how the enemy can come in and begin to manipulate. And you start leaning into it. It causes, you know, if you're the one giving that, it causes you to feel good. You know, because you're pouring out. And it's like, man, it, you know, I'm really doing something good. But any time the focus comes to me and off of God, it's a, it's a wrong thing. He restores. He refreshes. He leads us in paths of righteousness. Even though if I go through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear what? No evil. Come on. Even in the valley, I got to have attitude. Even in the valley. Where did David get this from? Go to Psalms, or I'm sorry, uh, 1 Samuel 17. David and Goliath. Whew. Even in the valley, there's an attitude. And we can see this coming from David. And, and, and what I love about this is uh, you don't have to have formal training if you got the Holy Ghost. Now, I'm not taking away anything from that. There's a place for it. Yeah, and I, I believe we better ourselves at any opportunity that God opens up that door. But don't feel like... You, you can't do something because you don't have what the world says you need to qualify yourself. 1 Samuel 17, we know how even before, oh, that's uh, 39, let's see. We know how uh, David was telling Saul, you know, about the lion and the bear. And uh, so Saul, verse 38, put his armor on him and uh, his helmet and his coat of arms and coat of mail. And so David put on the sword and all that other stuff. And, and I believe as he's suiting himself up with, with what the, the, those that know were telling him he needed, it was, it, was, it was agitating his spirit. You know, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. You know, and, and, just, it, and the thing is, is even if it worked for you, doesn't mean it's going to work for me. I, ju I just got to have what God said. I need. 
That's why we don't pattern our life. And we, we have to, we, uh, it's a good thing to glean. In the multitude of counsel, there, there comes forth wisdom. But what does that mean? What's the reality of that? I, I glean from here, and I glean from here, and I glean from here, and I glean from here. And I take all that I've heard, and I go to the Lord, and I say, Father, I don't need knowledge. I need wisdom. So how, how, I need an application of the things I've been hearing to see how this may or may not fit my life. And then God will show you what best works for you. And I believe David, and he's putting on this armor. He's realizing, man, this is, not gonna, this is weighing me down. This is not freeing me up. See, that's how you know when it's a God thing or not. Is it weighing you down or, or can you run? If you're taking on the weight of something, it's probably not a God thing. He said, cast your care because he cares for us. David said, I can't do this. I haven't proved this. So then he takes out his, 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 his slingshot. He says he gets his, his sling and five smooth stones, and he goes down to the brook. And here's the attitude, because Goliath is coming up, and he's taunting David. He's shouting out. He's, he's cursing. What's he trying to do? He's, trying to, he's doing his best to get David in the flesh. You see how this plays out in our life? Somebody cut you off in traffic. It's the, it's the same thing as David dealing right here. The devil doing his best to get you in the flesh. He's doing his best to flip you out of spirit mode. Because he knows if he can get you in the flesh, it's not going to be good. That, that's not where our strength comes from. That's not who we are. He's trying to get him, and, and he's cursing him. Am I a dog? Verse 43, you come at me with a stick, and, he's, and, he's, and he goes on. He says, I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to feed you to the birds of the air today. And David, I mean, I, it's just, you can almost just hear the, 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 the attitude coming out of David. See, and this attitude came from that secret place that nobody else knew about until this day. Nobody else knew the training David was going through. I don't even fully understand if David knew what he was going through until this day. And you might not understand why you're in what you're in until that time comes, but when that time comes, you'll know. I, I, almost, under, I almost think that David is almost like having an having a aha moment while he's telling Saul. Oh, my goodness. That lion and that bear, preparation. That was my spiritual resume to set me up for what I'm about to do or what God's about to do through me. You know, and it's, it's almost like I, I could almost see him being surprised it was coming out of his mouth. This Philistine, he just liked one of them animals because he ain't got no covenant with God. He don't even recognize God. So he ain't no match for me or to God to send me. He said, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and the bear, Finna whoop up on this fella. And David starts talking back with attitude. With attitude. Come on, say with attitude. Yeah. If, if I, you need to be talking to your situations because your situations are talking to you. Yeah, right. We see Jesus talking tree. Right? Talking fish. Y'all gather up, boys. He's going to put the net over here. Y'all got to get ready. Or telling another one to go get a coin. You better learn how to talk to your aches and pains. You better learn how to talk. When the prognosis comes, when the muscles tore from the bone, you better learn how to talk to your muscles and your bones and your liver and your lungs and your kidneys and your whatevers. And they say, yeah, you know this runs in your family. No, it's running out my family tree. See, I mean, come on now. We all got some BC. You cuss it when it broke. We didn't mind, you talk to it in the negative and didn't think nothing about it. And nobody else thought nothing about it. I almost kind of think it's natural. But it's, why you give me the funny look when I'm talking positive to stuff? David said in 45, you come at me with a sword and a spear? I got the name of the Lord. Oh. In whom you have defiled today. Come on, say today. 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 You, it, it, I, I, I don't know if he snapped or not, but it, it just it, it, it felt good when I did it. Today. 
the Lord will deliver you into my hands. I'm going to smite. King James smite. It just don't, I don't know if it came off with quite that. He said, I'm going to kill you. I almost think he said fool like Mr. T, but I don't know. But the Bible said the fool says there is no God. And the Philistine, he was saying, he was, he did. So I don't think it's too much of a stretch to say he's a fool. Fool. Anyway, he said, I'm going to cut your head off. Verse 46, and I, I love how David just, I mean, he done, he's done gone straight on past Goliath to all the rest of them. You, you can't miss this. I mean, here's this 17-year-old kid taking us all to school tonight. Because he is far gone. He, I'm going to give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines. He doesn't look back. He, he, he's seeing beyond. Go, all y'all up there, you think you're hiding on the hill? Y'all going down too. And that needs to be an attitude coming out of us. No, devil, you and every demon you tried to bring to this, evicted. You're out of my house. You're out of my neighborhood. Come on, we as a people of God say you're out of our government. Don't get caught up in Republican and Democrat. There's good and bad on both sides and independence too. What we need is righteousness. But until we start to declare one nation under God, Father, we, we need your plan in this. We need your plan working in this. I'm going to give all of y'all so that the whole earth may know that there is a God in Israel, that there is a God in the United States of America, that there is a God in our house, in our neighborhood, in our city, on our streets. Amen. And it comes with an attitude. Now, we, you understand, he's, he's not dealing necessarily straight at Goliath. He's talking to the spirit that's behind this thing. You know, so don't, re, don't, don't get, again, don't get sucked into flesh and blood. You know, don't, don't direct it at the boss or whoever else. Recognize the spirit. And to address things, you don't have to be loud or wordy. You just have to be on point with what God is telling you to do at the time. Some of the most powerful prayers that's ever been uttered have been barely audible. Hannah poured her spirit out to the Lord. Eli didn't even know what was going on. Falsely accused her of wrong behavior. But her prayer got heaven's attention. Right? So it, we, we got to just learn to unpack it from religion and its relationship. And the Holy Spirit shows us exactly what to do in the moment we're in, which is so awesome. Come on, victory is our normal. We don't have time to, well, let's go to Joshua chapter 7. We do. We're talking about attitude, and this is a great attitude story right here. Joshua chapter 7, verse 2. They had sent uh, men, well, verse 2. Joshua sends from Jericho in, uh, men into Ai. That, you know, we'd, they just seen this miraculous, you know, the walls just literally being shoved in the ground by the, by the hands of God. And, uh, you know, not a, not, a, not, a, not a single soldier lost in this battle. So now they're coming into Ai, which is by Beth Avon. And uh, they say, go up and spy it out. So they come back to Joshua, verse 3. Man, we don't, it's a little tiny town. We don't even need to take the whole army. You know, we just, we just take a few thousand goes. We'll go up there and we'll whoop them. You know, they ain't nothing. And uh, so they go up, about 3,000, it said, and Ai put a whooping on them. This little tiny town rose up and, and, and sent them all running. And, and they said that they killed 36 men. Well, this, this freaked Joshua out. I mean, how can we take Jericho and not lose a man? We come up on this little tiny town which shouldn't be nothing, and we get whooped. Well, number one, you didn't consult God. You just consulted self, right? Pride goes before a fall. But see, that's not all of it. Joshua, I mean, so his mentality is so victory-oriented. I mean, man, how many songs did we sing tonight about victory? And I think, I think Wes even, uh, I don't know if that was on the, uh, on the set list or not, but started singing about victory in the Spirit. You know, so I knew this was on point for us. I knew this is things God's, you know, unfolding for us. So we can have, this needs to be in us. Joshua was so victory-minded when it didn't go right. Man, he's ripping his clothes, and I don't get naked. I, mean, I don't want nobody doing that. But, I mean, that was kind of a, a display, like, this ain't right. He's throwing a fit. I mean, God, this, this is not how it's supposed to unfold. But, I mean, or have we gotten so complacent and so used to average and so used to not winning that we... 
maybe, maybe we need to learn how to throw a fit when things don't go like the Word of God says it ought to go. Lord, your Word says, and if your Word says this, and I'm seeing that, then something is up. Now, I need to know what's up, because I know you don't change, so something else has. Right? It, it ought to stir something in us. We don't take it on the chin, and we don't go home. Well, we'll get them next time. You better go over it. We got too much of that going on. That's why we, that's why we still got racism. That's why we still got injustice. That's why we still got trafficking and all this other stuff that's going on. So we ain't got attitude like we need to. We ain't got that don't take no for an answer. We ain't got that I'm taking you, Goliath, and all them back there behind you. Attitude. That we need as the children of God. No, demons ain't in control of this place. It's ours. God said in Genesis, dominion. His word ain't changed. Maybe we change toward his word. Joshua, he's throwing a fit. It's ain't supposed to be. And he goes to the Lord, which is, I mean, it's a good thing. What's up with all this? Lord, you know, I mean, he's, he's unloading on him too now. Lord, you done brought us out here and made us look like fools in front of all these people. We should have stayed over yonder on the other side of Jordan. Uh, you may as well say it. The Lord knows your heart anyway. Now, I, I'm not giving you license to go off on the Lord, you know, because that's probably not going to be a healthy thing for us if you continue to do that. But we're trying to learn a lesson here about attitude. And, the, you know, and, and it's just, and it's just so, it's so messing with him. He said, and they're going, he said, we should have stayed over yonder. And, and Lord, what am I going to say when Israel turn and run and all this begins to unfold? And the Lord kind of lets him, you know, play it out for a minute. And in verse 10, he just like, all right, that's it. Shut up. <laughs> Get up. You act like a fool. Why are you laying down there on the ground like that? Verse 11, here we go. You opened up a door. You, you gave the devil place. You in sin. That's news to him, and see, but you don't know till you know, right? And, and God's not, it, it's not a bad thing to find out. It's a good thing to find out. We're talking about correction and direction, right? We're talking about why we do or may not have victory. It's like, man, I can't believe he's doing that. Yeah, he's doing that because it's holding you back from something more greater than you could possibly imagine. There's, there's sin in the camp. Y'all broke my, broke my word. You broke my covenant. You broke my commandment. Y'all took from the accursed stuff, and you put it on, and you learned back that Achan, verse 1 of this chapter, had stolen stuff that belonged to God. And God wasn't happy with it, and it cost him a victory, but we're talking about an attitude, and Joshua's fit. It's like, man, it's, it's, there's, 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 there's some things that I think God's, we need to have our mentality reset. That when it's not going well, it, it, he said, I'll cause you to be the head. And not the tail. Listen, it's an old covenant now. We're talking about blood of bulls and goats, and they, they living like that. How much? Where should we be with Jesus? Above only, only, not beneath. Blessed coming in, blessed going out. So if, if it's not unfolding like that, we're gonna need to we're gonna need to take a look at some stuff. Make sure I hadn't opened up. Now, I understand there's a devil, too. There's a devil and there's demons. So, I mean, it ain't got to be a sin issue. But we still need to know where it's coming from. Right? Because I don't want to be, in a sense, wasting my faith on something that's a flesh issue. I need to know how to direct my words and direct my warfare. You know, see, I may be rebuking the devil, and it's me. Oh, y'all, I, y'all, mm. or vice versa. I don't want to be, I don't want to be taking on guilt, and it's that doggone demon. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. But at the end of the day, we got to get this attitude to stir us to a place of action where we begin to address those situations. Quit tolerating what we ought to be dominating. 
right? Psalms 107 said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. There's got to be a, a, a say so. Psalms 27, I know the time's wrapping up, but we need, these are some good attitude boosters right here. Psalms 27, just verse 1 in, of that. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Well, he's not giving us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And it's about time we tap into it and begin to exercise that. You know, be, Lord, show me what I need to be getting up on. Show me, show me what I, wh wh where my fight is. You know, I guess I need to put this out here too. Every fight's not your fight. Every fight's not your fight. So make sure that, that's probably one of the first things we need to go. Just because something's going on does, doesn't necessarily mean you're anointed to deal with that situation. Well, they're calling us over here. We need to run. You better not do nothing but run to the Lord and find out if, that's, if that ain't none of your business. Let God... Because you'll walk over into something and get whooped that you're not anointed for. Right? Because the devil, I mean, we, it, uh, okay. Yeah, because uh, it, 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 a lot of this stuff appeals back to pride. Well, I got authority over serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy. Yeah, and if you led, then you're victorious. But if you're not being led, don't think you're going to use God's authority out of order. There's a lot of people get whooped because they're, not in a, they're, they're, they're in a fight that's not theirs. I mean, back to David, we could take a description on this. Lord, is this my fight? The Philistines rose up. He went to the Lord and said, Lord, is this my fight? He just whooped them the, the previous chapter. But he didn't assume like Joshua did. I think, you know, maybe he learned a lesson from Ai. Man, I better not step into this until I consult with the Lord. Might just not be my life in peril, it might be the lives of those that are around me in peril. Lord, is this my fight? If it ain't, I don't want nothing to do with it. If it is my fight, then give me the strategy that's gonna lead me to victory. Because God's plan never fails. Never fails. 28, verse 7. Hang a right, go one chapter over. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him, and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoiced. And with my song, I will praise him. We know Psalms 91, but it's a good one as we're winding down. Man, these are, these, are, these are attitude boosters. These are faith builders. But there's so much. You see, you see the declaration that is in this, right? It, it, it's, I, even in Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not be in lack. He leads me. You got you to gotta take ownership of this or, or, or you're not going to enjoy the fullness of it. Psalms 91, verse 1. I don't know if we'll read the whole chapter or not, but the whole chapter is good. I'm almost there. I'm stuck in 119. Hold on. That's a long one, y'all. And we're not going to read it tonight. That's a, that's a good one, too, though, but it's just, ooh, man, we'd be, it'd be tomorrow before we finished up 119. <laughs> Psalms 91, he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will think about it. No, no, I'm going to be hoping. No, I'm going to be declaring. There's, there's something to this. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge. He is my fortress. He is my God. If I'm in the fortress, how am I going to get whooped? It ain't going to happen. But if I step out, it's a good probability that I might get popped with an arrow. Surely he will deliver you from the fowler, from the north and pestilence. From all the commotion that's going on, thousand fall at your right, ten thousand at your left, it ain't going to hit you because you made the Lord your habitation and hiding place. You tread upon, verse 13, the lion and the adder and the young lion and all this because we said his love, he, and, and he said, verse 16, with a long life will I satisfy and show you my salvation. 103 of Psalms, and we'll wrap it up with this one. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Yes. Woo, come on. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Forget not all or any 
of his benefits. Let's stand. Who forgives all our iniquities, heals all. Why, why, we, why, we, why we get to the point where we feel good and stop? Jesus didn't die to make you better. He died to make you whole. He didn't die to make us better. He died to make us new. Don't let the devil tell you good is good enough. Not when God has more for you. It's an attitude we need to have. Forgives all our iniquities. Heals all our diseases. Redeems our life from destruction. Crowns us with loving kindness. Tender mercies. Satisfies our mouth with good things. Good things. Good things. So that our youth is renewed like the eagles. Father, we come before you. I just so grateful again for the Holy Spirit. We ask you, Holy Spirit, show us how to take this word we've heard tonight and apply it to our lives. Show us how we can take your word and see the fullness of it. If we've opened up doors through ignorance or knowledge, show us how we can shut these doors and seal them off. Lord, stir in us that attitude. God, that we see in David that, Lord, had an expectation of victory. Lord, I don't believe we sang it by, uh, by chance tonight. I believe it was under divine unction of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to see the victory. The battle belongs to the Lord. Greater is he that is in us. So there's no devil going to be able to stand before us, Father. Not when we know we're new, where we need to be by your direction. Lord, even tonight, somebody might be dealing with, I feel it like, like they're dealing with a situation. And God, I pray their faith gets stirred up and say, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Thank you will stand between a child of God and their promise. You're not going to stand between the yes and the amen that God said is mine. So, Lord, let, it, let there be a passionate pursuit. God, just, just ignited on the inside of us tonight. Lord, not just for us, but for us, our children, our families, for those that are around us. God, that, that, that our pursuit would be an inspiration. God, just like we read of David and his exploits and these other mighty men and women of God, Lord, and it, it inspires us. To understand that the same God that was working for them is working for us and on our behalf. Lord, but let it all be said and done. And Lord, let everything be done in such a way that it brings you and you alone glory and praise and honor. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Folks, we love you. God bless you. Thank you for being in here tonight. Encourage one another, man. Get in there and go for it. Because God has amazing things in store for you. We'll see you next time.